Okay, we've now spent we've now spent quite a while talking philosophically about linked lists and this concept of a linked list. I think it's time to actually write some programs that work with linked lists or write some simple linked list methods. So here again is our picture of a linked list that we should keep in our head as we write this code. And uh, let's proceed. So the first problem I have is given a linked list, get me the third data value. So given list, can you get me C? That's the challenge. So and maybe you've already figured out how to do that. Uh oh, why am I getting this error? Here we go. Okay. Um, let's write some code. Public static string get third. So this method takes in a linked list, and remember a linked list is of type node, because what we're really being passed is the first node in the list. And since we're getting the third data value, we probably better assume, so we have a precondition, list contains at least three data values, otherwise this doesn't work. Right, otherwise we'll crash. So we'll assume we have at least three data values, and get third is going to return the third value in the list. Right, how would we do that? Well, how would we get the first value in the list? How would we get the first value? And again, it's going to help to always have one of these pictures of a linked list in our mind. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it lower on the screen just in case. Okay, so we have our, our linked list in mind. Whoop, that's a long arrow and a funny shaped box. And yeah, you tried drawing with this stupid tool. Okay. Um, oh, that box looks terrible. Okay, remember I'm drawing the first part of the box is the data value. The second part of the box refers to is the next, which references the next node. The very last node has a null as its next, and we draw the null as a slash usually. Um, although you'll see it drawn in other ways. Different people draw it differently. Um, okay, and list, variable list, refers to that first node. And we want to know what is this third value here. How would we get the first value? Well, we would say list dot, and if you remember, let's go back in time so you don't have to remember. If you remember, this is my node class, so I can call get data, get next, set data, and set next, and those are going to help me. So let's go back to where I left off just a moment ago. Oops, okay. All right, and so if I say list get data, I'll get this first data value. If I say list get next, I will get a reference to the second node. And if I wanted the second node's data value, I would say get data from that thing, and that would give me this data value. But I don't want its data value. I want its next. So list refers to this. List get next refers to this node. List get next get next. I know this strikes you as silly, but we're going to see this a lot with linked list. List get next get next refers to this third node here. And if I want to know this mystery data value here, I just ask that node for its next by saying, or sorry, for its data value by writing this. And of course we want to return that. So the overall code is return list get next get next get data. I know it, it may strike you as kind of silly, but that really is what it looks like to work with linked lists. Okay, and, and uh, it's not that bad. So you'll get a feel for that. You want the first value, get data. You want the second, get next, get data. You want um, all right. Anyway, you get the idea. Let's write some more code. So, next challenge. Next challenge is uh, insert second. That's what I want to do. I think this will give us some good practice. So we'll take in a linked list again, and a particular string, and we know that list is not empty. What does that mean, list is not empty? It means list is not null. Remember, null signifies the empty list. So I'm telling you list is not null. And the reason I'm telling you that is because it does not make sense to insert something second in the list if there's not already something first in the list. right? So we have to have at least one data value for this, for this method to make any sense. So we want to insert something second. And it turns out the key to doing that is to do it pictorially first. Draw it first. right? Otherwise, plunging in and writing this code is going to be very tricky. So how do we change this picture here to insert something to be second in the list? What would we have to do? Well, 
one thing we need to do is we need to make a new node. And what's going to be in that new node? Well, technically it's going to be a reference to whatever S refers to. And I guess we could draw that correctly if we really want. Fine, we'll draw it correctly. So we have S, which refer. No, you know what? I'm, I don't feel like drawing that. I think you can keep track of what I mean. When I write S here, I don't mean the value S is the data value for this node. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, the value that the variable S refers to is going to be the same value that the data field inside this node refers to. But I'll just write it shorthand like this. Okay, how about the next? Well, I don't know. But I do know I want this node to be second in the linked list. So that tells me that I want the first node to continue to this node and for this new node to continue to what used to be the second and is now the third node and that will effectively remove this arrow here so that's the plan now we write the code and I think to write the code it will help to get rid of that picture and then to draw it as we draw as we write the code so the first thing was I need to make a node need to make a node. Where's my cursor? Come back cursor. Ah, okay. Make a node. <coughs> uh, I'll call it new node. And new node should refer to a new node. And that new node has a data value of s, or whatever s refers to, and a next of, well I don't know. We'll figure that out in a moment. But for now, let's make null, meaning it doesn't have a next. Okay, now I'm sorry. I did that. All right, anyway. Anyway, okay, so I'm making my new node. Good, new node. What do I have to do next? Well, I want, actually, I know what I want the next to be, right? I want new node. I'm going to change new nodes next. So new node, set your next to be this node the second how do I get that node well that node is list get next list get next right remember list refers to the first node so list get next refers to the second node and I want new nodes to set its next in fact we'll just draw it like that new node should set its next to be list get next Okay, next. I know the word next is coming up too much, isn't it? So, I still need to change this node so it goes to the new node. So I need this arrow here and that arrow there. And when I do that, that's going to that's gonna eliminate this arrow. So by the way, I think this is worth pointing out. It's important that I changed this arrow before this arrow, right? If I were to... I, th I think this is one of the lovely things about linked lists. If we were to go back in time and decide, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is forget setting the next of new node. We'll do that later. What I'd like to do is change this node to go to my new node. So that would be list set next to be new node. And if I do that, what I've just done is I've changed this arrow to now go up here and that's a big problem because the moment I do that I have completely lost any access to the rest of this list right so I don't want to do that I want to be very careful not to lose access to it so that's a good argument oops <coughs> that's a good argument for going back in time to the moment where I cleverly set the next of my new node before I tried to set the next of this node so overall what do we have so we'll go back to this moment we made the new node we set the new nodes next to be list get next that makes this arrow here and now we need to set lists next list set next to be this node here which is new node by the way this line that I just wrote I should point out one of the mistakes I've seen people make when they're working with linked lists and they're not too comfortable with Java programming or programming in whatever language they write things like this list get next equals new node right what does that do 
Well, that doesn't even compile, right? Because the thing on the left side of the equal sign has to be a variable or at least some place you can store something. You can't assign to a method call. It doesn't mean anything. I, I know what you meant. You meant to set the next inside of list to be new node. But remember, the way to do that is to ask list set next. Call the set next method to store new node inside. Okay, when we do that, I think we're going to be pleased with the results because we will change this next to be this. And sure enough, I will have inserted a node to be second. And one thing that sometimes surprises people about linked lists is that when this method ends, I really have changed this linked list. I really have changed it. It's not like at the end of this method, it's not like I've only inserted it to be second inside of this method. And when I return from the method, we'll be back to the old world. No, I've changed. I passed a reference to this node, and I changed by calling set next what was inside that node. And by changing what was inside that node, anyone on the outside of this method, this is a point I'll stress many times as we work with linked lists, but let me just finish this thought. Anyone in, on the outside of the insert second method who had a reference to this node, now when they have that node and they ask it it's next, they now see this brand new node instead of the node that it used to refer to. All right, I think I've said that enough for today. And uh, that, uh, that concludes the basics of working with linked lists and writing methods. What I think we're going to work toward soon enough is, well, what does it look, um, what does it look like to write code that actually loops over a linked list, that traverses a linked list in order to manipulate it or, or tabulate something about it? So we'll, uh, we'll pick up there. I'll see you in the next video.